reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at the time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had been wanting to see him for a long time, because he had heard about him and was hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him. Even Herod with his soldiers treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then he put an elegant robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. That same day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other. Before this, they had been enemies. Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders and the people and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was perverting the people. And here I have examined him in your presence, and have not found this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. Then they all shouted out together, Away with this fellow, release the rabbis for us. This was a man who had been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again. But they kept on shouting, 
Crucify him. Crucify him. A third time he said to them, Why? What evil has he done? I have found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and then release him. But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. He released the man they asked for, the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder, and he handed Jesus over as they wished. As they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country, and they laid a cross upon him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of the people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the Skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing, and the people stood by watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, If he saved others, let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his child. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, the King of the Jews. One of the criminals who was hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, while the sun's light failed and the curtains of the temple were torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. And when all the crowds who had gathered there for this spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance. Watching these things. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. One of my must-watch TV programmes uh, on a Saturday morning at about 10 to 8 is News Watch, a programme in which viewers have the opportunity of writing in or phoning in uh, to bellyache about the BBC's news programmes. And not surprisingly, in the last few weeks, um, a lot of the comments, mostly adverse as to the coverage, have focused on Ukraine. But last week and yesterday, interestingly, there was great indignation about the amount of time on news bulletins which were given to that so-called celebrity Will Smith's behaviour at the Oscars ceremony. And that, people said, was appalling, given that it, as it were, usurped the terrible images coming from Ukraine. Sadly, in our modern society, this notion of celebrity seems to occupy too high a profile on TV, radio, and in the media generally. If there was a more sophisticated 
media presence at the time of Jesus. I wonder what news headlines would have been paramount then. Would they have focused on Jesus? Did he have celebrity status? Certainly the events of that first Palm Sunday suggest that he had a degree of, shall we say, notoriety. But the state of the country under Roman occupation was a state that lent itself to the need for a leader. A corrupt society, greed, self-interest, huge taxes, downtrodden people. What was needed was someone who would stand up for truth and justice. And strangely enough, they say there's nothing new. The headlines that would have been relevant then are perhaps equally relevant now. And that poses a question for us, doesn't it? What do you and I expect from Holy Week and Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem? How do we get from today, Palm Sunday, to Easter Sunday? And I suspect it will be very different for each one of us. For some Christians, it's a very emotional time having to try to balance the excitement of the Palm Sunday and to move forward to Monday Thursday when he tells his disciples that this is the end and the sadness and the implications that that would have for them and then on to the devastating events of Good Friday. And so then as now, there is a real temptation to want to skip from the joy of Good Friday to the even greater joy of Easter Day without having to worry about the bit in the middle. The travesty of his arrest, the horror of this fake trial, and ultimately crucifixion. The truth is that Lent occupies for Christians a really important role in enabling us to accompany Jesus on that journey to Jerusalem. And I think that without seeing it through in Holy Week, can we really, really celebrate Easter properly? Some of you may have seen the film Chocolat, released I think in around about 2000, which was set in France during a period of Lent. And superficially, if you know the film or you've read the book, you'll know that it's about the battle and the consequences of giving up food that we like during Lent. But its deeper focus really is on looking how there are behavioural changes that doing without something that we adore have. And the characters that we meet in that film are past probably slightly over-exaggerated, but what happens to them, you and I can identify it, because they were not a lot different to you and I, or any other cross-section of society. There was Vian, who dared to open the chocolateria, uh, who wanted everyone to enjoy chocolate and life. There was the old lady, who was a diabetic, who loved chocolate at a cost to her own health. The retired gentleman who took his dog everywhere that he went, the battered wife of Sergei, the cafe owner, and a really important character, the mayor, who saw chocolate, madman, as evil and too much temptation. <laughs> and he tries to set this example by fasting through Lent, as well as taking on the task of writing the priest's sermon to make sure he gets it right. I wish I had one of those in <laughs> And in the film, what we see over time is a change in the characters. And perhaps through those characters, we see some of our own characteristics, or those of the people that you and I live and work with. The overprotective, those who struggle with their health, the children who enjoy life all the time. And in the Gospels, the same people are to be found, those that Jesus exercised ministry and interacted with, those who demand to see how he healed, even Herod who wanted to see a sign those with a great determination to get to Jesus. Remember the friends who ripped the roof off a house so they could lower their friend, the paralysed man, into his presence. Those who needed feeding, both physically and spiritually. And look at the disciples, an idiosyncratic group with all the normal tensions and problems that a group of people have. Jesus' entry into Jerusalem was probably a shock to many. Yes, he created great excitement. Is this the king who is to save the people, the Messiah, the promised one, they asked. 
Jesus himself remains calm, almost passive, riding on this colt or donkey. And he neither criticises nor confirms the crowd's acclamation. But the crowds went along with it, shouting and cheering, no doubt mutterings from the authorities were present in the subculture of the, the shouting. But what we do know is that if by the end of the week, all those shoutings and cheerings and the people who were fully behind Jesus turned to jeering. We sing the hymn, My Song is Love and Known, and the author of that puts it very succinctly. He writes, resounding all the day, hosannas to their king, then crucify is all their breath, and for his death they thirst and cry. And what about those closest to him? Did they think he was foolhardy, walking into this trap? Did they understand the implications for themselves, what they would be left with? And is it not the inheritance of each and every disciple down the ages to pick up the pieces and take up the cross and follow Jesus and his ministry? Because that's surely what we're called to do. In a sense, it goes back to our own attitude and our own willingness that makes other people see us, not just as people doing good things, but people who belong and live out their faith in the way that they treat others around them. And whether our expectations of our own ministry are large or small, does it really matter as long as we're doing what God has called us to do? Holy Week has spawned many epic films. If you look through the TV times this week, you'll see that some of the ones made in the 50s are being dragged out yet again. But undergirding all this is a story of love. Love which cancels our sins, our debts, once and for all. And that might be an act of love for some people who find it difficult to come to terms with. But it is there. God's love for his son and through his son, his love for us. As a child, one of my favourite stories that I kept wanting to be read to me every night was the story of the Velveteen Rabbit. And the skin horse tells the rabbit, generally, by the time you are real, most of your hair has been loved off and your eyes drop out and you get loose of the joints and very shabby. But these things don't matter at all. I'm not suggesting anybody here. <laughs> but these things don't matter at all because once you are real, you can't be ugly except to people who don't understand. Holy Week is real. Good Friday is very real. And the love that God has for his son and for us is incredibly real. Yes, the events of Good Friday for many are just too ugly. But for those of us who have faith, it's the ultimate expression of real. And that expression of God's love. So this Holy Week, there is a special message for Christians across the world, especially Christians who express their faith in places where they run the risk of injury, imprisonment and even death, because it is still essentially a message of hope and a message of love. So on this Palm Sunday, it is very important that we enter Jerusalem triumphantly with Jesus, but it's also important that we do not shy away from the humiliation and the pain that was to come. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Merciful God, as we enter Holy Week, turn our hearts again to Jerusalem and to the life, death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Stir up within us the gift of faith that we may not only praise him with our lips, but may follow him in the way of the cross. Amen. And so in confidence of the resurrection, let us stand and confess our faith in the words of the Creed. <laughs> we believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten from our name, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. 
For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified from the conscious Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we begin this Holy Week, when Christ prayed in the anguish of his passion, let us ask our Heavenly Father to hear and answer our prayers out of love for his Son, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. <laughs> Heavenly Father, on this past Sunday, our Lord Jesus Christ was given a great welcome as he entered Jerusalem. The people rejoiced because they believed that Jesus would free them from their Roman rulers. But Jesus had been given a different mission because his kingdom was not of this world. The disappointment of the people quickly changed they are welcome to anger and condemnation. We give thanks that Jesus remained true to his given mission, even though he knew that it would lead to his death. We pray, O Lord, that you will help us to be faithful to our calling, that we may not be diverted from the way you have set before us but may follow in the steps of our crucified and risen Lord, to whom be all glory and honour this day and for evermore. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord hear us. Lord of peace, we pray that you will have mercy on our world, <coughs> tottering on the brink of disaster and self-destruction. Have mercy on the world's rulers and statements, statesmen and give them wisdom and a desire for peace. Lord of compassion, we commend to your loving care all families scattered and separated by war, uprooted from their homes and divided from one another. Comfort and strengthen them in their bewilderment, grief and anxiety. Give them friends and helpers. Make war to cease and bring the people safely together again. And we pray particularly for the people of Ukraine. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Pray, O Lord, that you will help us to make this church a beacon of hope and help within our local community. And we thank you for those who work in social services. Be with them in their efforts to mend broken lives and broken homes, to help alcoholics and drug addicts, to minister to people in trouble and despair, and give them in their work all needful patience, sympathy, and understanding. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Gracious Lord, when you entered Jerusalem riding on a donkey, the people went wild with excitement. We too enjoy times of celebration, but some of our friends cannot share in these good times 
because they are sick. We know that you always had compassion on the sick, and so we bring into your presence all those who are ill or suffering. We pray especially for Margaret Nicholl, Richard Cook, Connie Drushell, Beryl Carstens, Jim Melrose, and Canon Ed Southern. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God of courage, when you set your face towards Jerusalem, you knew that it would mean your death, but you did not turn aside. We now pray for all those who have died recently, or for whose time here is short, that they may know your presence with them, to give them strength and courage. We pray especially for Army Amy Greenhow, and we pray for Joyce Armour, whose ashes are to be buried after this service. We also pray for Martin Holt, for whom the anniversary of his death occurs at this time. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Lord Jesus, you showed the world your princely power by riding into Jerusalem on a donkey. Help us to understand the humility of your journey to the cross so that we may experience the glory of your victory over sin and death. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Once we were far off, but now in union with Christ Jesus, we've been brought near through the shedding of Christ's blood, for he is our peace. And so the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice of yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his church. <laughs> Through the passion of your only Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not mend it by our own deeds, yet by this offering made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. And now we give you thanks because for our salvation he was obedient even to death on the cross. The tree of shame was made the tree of glory. And where life was lost, there life has been restored. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing.
God may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me.
happy are those who are called to his son. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you. Let me say the word, and I shall be healed. We can join now with those who can't be with us physically this morning, but who are joining in our worship from home. We share with them an act of spiritual communion. Thanks be to you, O Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given us, for all the pains you have borne for us, since there are those from our church family who cannot this morning receive you sacramentally. We ask you to come spiritually into their hearts. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, May they know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly day by day. Amen. Father, if this cup cannot pass without my drinking it, your will be done.
Jesus Christ, you humbled yourself in taking the form of a servant, and in obedience died on the cross for our salvation. Give us the mind to follow you, and to proclaim you as Lord and King to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out to the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. I'm delighted to say 
The pajamas are turned off. <laughs> and I'm very sad to say the cassock is not turned off. So the, the checker that I used to use is very timely. Um, you, I, I've only ever had one cassock in 30 or 35 plus years of ministry. And it was beginning to uh, look a little bit sad. So I would really invest that checker in a new cassock. I should have all bright and, and nice in the future. It'll be me very in the I suspect. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, I'm a, everyone's in the And it's Palm Sunday, so it's good to finish on a bang note. She's not going to thank me today, so are you, Palm Noel? You see, there's no escape. It's Palm's birthday tomorrow. 110. <laughs>
and ever-living God, bless these palm crosses with that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. As you went according to the you the loyal disciples who hear the word of Jesus, follow his teaching, and live in his spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.